Microbiological assays are whole cell assays that monitor some non-chemical process in the cell. Cell growth is one such phenomenon. By measuring optical density as absorbance at 600 nanometers, you can follow the growth of a cell culture over time. The first derivative of this trace is the growth rate. In this experiment, we individually place three different protein components of a genetic device under the PBAD promoter and monitor the cell's growth as a function of time with and without arabinose induction. An examination of the growth rate shows that REP-L is clearly toxic to the cell upon induction, and, it, and this knowledge is useful for debugging the circuit. Genetically encoded processes have naturally evolved to improve the fitness of their organism in some environment. By placing the organism in this environment, you can monitor the function of the process by virtue of the organism's growth. Here we are monitoring the expression of capsular polysaccharides, which are encoded by two large gene clusters. When all these genes are expressed with the right timing, localization, and concentration, the surface of the bacterium becomes heavily decorated with carbohydrates that affect immunological properties of the bacterium. These modifications allow the bacterium to survive in horse serum. Horse serum, or the non-cellular component of adult horse blood, contains complement, which will quickly kill a non-encapsulated bacterium. However, with a complete set of functioning genes, viability is restored. In this assay, we incubate the bacteria with horse serum for some amount of time and then spread the mixture on culture plates. The next day, we count colonies and we measure what percentage of the bacteria survived the serum. And we can relate different compositions of these gene clusters to how they performed in this assay. Beyond growth, there are other processes that organisms do that can be monitored to observe the behavior of a cellular process. Here we look at chemotaxis using a swarming assay. Agar medium is prepared with only a small amount of agar resulting in very soft petri dishes. A small spot of bacteria is placed in the middle of the dish and then incubated for several hours. If the bacteria have intact chemotaxis processes, they will swim outwards from the center of the plate forming a cloudy circle. The diameter of this circle is an indirect measure of functionality. In this particular experiment, they have constructed an E. coli strain with an aptamer controlling the key Z gene. Key Z is a protein required for chemotaxis to happen. By including the ribosome binding site in front of key Z with an aptamer that binds theophylline, the expression of key Z is dependent on the concentration of theophylline. Thus, addition of the small molecule to the media results in more uh, of this swarming effect. By doing this assay with many concentrations of theophylline and the related but non-functional compound caffeine as a control, they're able to obtain a transfer function relating the input concentration of the molecule to the cell's output behavior uh, as measured in this swarming assay. Another microbiological behavior is adhesion. Bacteria often stick to surfaces, including the surfaces of other cells, like human gut epithelial cells. Though it is not synonymous with biofilm formation, it is a highly related phenomenon and very similar until you, in terms of how you assay it. One way to quantify it involves microplate-based adhesion assays. In this example, we are monitoring the adhesion of bacteria to mannan, a carbohydrate resembling the surface of mammalian epithelial cells. This happens by virtue of the fact that the bacteria encode type 1 pili, which will bind to mannan. We begin with a well of a 96 well ELISA plate. You are looking at the plate sideways on. To each well, we'll add mannan, and it becomes adhered to the surface. We also block the cells with BSA to prohibit further nonspecific binding. We then add the cells of the strain we wish to test, and we give them some time to adhere, and then we wash the unbound cells away. Finally, we stain the cells with gram stain and obtain a measure of cell adhesion in terms of the intensity of purple color. Here is an example of adhesion assays in action from the Collins lab. First, they have the toggle switch composed of lambda C1 and LAC I. This switch is fully on or off and can be switched between these states. This transcriptional circuit controls expression of the TRA-A gene. In response to DNA damage, the toggle switch flips on, TRA-A is produced, and this complements a missing copy of TRA-A needed to complete biofilm formation. Thus, DNA damage results in biofilm formation. 
To observe this behavior, they treat the bacteria with DNA damaging agents such as UV light or chemical mutagens and then perform the same crystal violet staining of adhered bacteria as described before. And then they plot the purple intensity for the different conditions.